I am a man of my word. Welcome back, Bear Down. I did say every time the Bears lose from here on out, I'm doing another mock draft. This is number three. And yet another way too early Chicago Bears mock draft. And yes, I'm going to keep doing one each week that we lose. We are almost mathematically eliminated. So this is making more and more sense to do this. I'm going to make this one more compact, more concise, and to the point I'm not going to do as much of the offseason. I'm going to do more about just drafting for quality in the trenches because that's what most of you have said you've wanted. We can do some other stuff on some other ones. We can do salary cap mock drafts. We can do which players we keep, which players we cut, which players we draft, which players we take in free agency. We can do a lot of that stuff. But for this one, we're going to focus solely on the trenches. So like last time, I used PFN's uh, Pro Football Network's Playoff predictor, you can go there. You can just Google that if you want to, and it'll simulate the rest of the season. This one actually came out exactly where the Bears are right now. We stand in 12th pick overall, and the way this predicted it out has the Bears going 7-10 and 10 and getting the 12th overall pick. So this is kind of a fun one because it's exactly where the Bears stand right now. The cool thing is it put Carolina all the way down at the second overall pick, so that would be awesome for the Bears. So if you look over here at the right, we use our little Bear Down logo as the pointer again. The Bears have the first overall, or first round 12th overall pick, second round 34th from the Panthers, second round 44th, third round 76th, fifth round 149, 6th, 7th, 7th from some of the trades that we did, Justin Fields, Khalil Herbert, and then a pick swap to be able to get Chris Williams. So I like the fourth round pick option. I feel like those two are close enough. I am going to do a trade down in this one. I'll trade down from 44 because those are relatively close together. And then I'll use it to pick up a fourth round pick. But then I'll also trade away a pick to be able to level it out and keep it at eight picks. So we'll go from there and you'll see what I mean. I think with the way Tevin Jenkins is playing, we probably sign him to a team-friendly deal, and we can do that because his injury history. So I think we probably sign him. But I want to focus on the trenches on this one. But with that being said, those who don't realize that Coleman Shelton is the 10th-ranked center out of qualifying centers this year, we're going to re-sign him because that cohesion with a rookie quarterback is important. We're still going to draft a center to be able to learn behind Coleman Shelton. If he beats him out, great. Keenan Allen, a lot of people have been bagging on him. I'm one that hasn't been. We're going to re-sign re him. We're going to extend him for two years, $30 million. That's a value signing deal. I'm not going to focus too much on this stiff mo stuff, mostly for backups. We're still going to draft in the trenches. I don't mind signing Jacob Martin as well. I think that's a quality signing. But like I said, we're going to focus on the trenches, so we're going to mostly draft the trenches. But I do want to keep Coleman Shelton because I think that's important for our rookie center to have cohesion. Then we can have someone learn under him, possibly beat him out. We'll see. All right, that being said, first round, we are going to take Walter Nolan, defensive tackle out of Ole Miss. A lot of you guys saw from my other video that I took him before. I'm going to focus on the trenches and where guys stand. In this video, I'm going to make it so I'm using NFL Draft Buzz. That's where these graphics come from. They're just screenshot from NFL Draft Buzz. This is a quick little snippet from their overall rankings. I'm going to go guys that are real close to where they have their overall rankings. So they have Walter Nolan, 12th overall in this draft. If the Bears can pick him up, it's an absolute steal in my opinion. Some places have him going lower than 12th overall. I think that'd be a steal for us. Nose tackle, defensive tackle. The reason being, look at this run defensive grade down here, 91.0. He's one of the most stout run defensive interior tackles on the defense there are. His pass rush is still good as well. 29 total pressures and 310 pass rushes, but he's going to stop every run that comes his way, and that's one of the Bears' biggest weaknesses this year. So you guys who have been listening to me, who watched the live game last game, with me that's the biggest weakness for the bears this offensive line is capable yes we need to keep bringing in competition we need to keep upgrading it and making it stronger and stronger because right now we probably wouldn't compete for a super bowl with this offensive line but the defensive line is a true liability in the tampa too and really any off or any defense that you're going to run but you have to get pressure on the quarterback otherwise they sit back there all day and our defense is going to fall apart so we've got to get pressure, and we've got to be able to stop the run. Walter Nolan is a true day one in impact game changer for the Bears. I would love to see the Bears take him. Five sacks this year, seven sacks last year, but his run defense is really, really solid, really elite, and I think he would be an awesome pickup. So again, I'm going to use NFL Draft Buzz, 12th overall right here. And with the second round, I'm going to take Jack Sawyer, who could very well end up going higher, but consensus is... He's actually going late to mid, well, mid to early 
second round pick. And with us getting Carolina's 34th overall, Jack Sawyer would be a steal because not only is he solid on the pass rush, look at this, 40 pressures on 234 pass rush opportunities this year, five sacks, last year eight sacks. A lot of people thought he would come into the draft last year. I kind of thought he would too, and then he decided not to. But also, his run defense is stacked as well. So he's super solid. Six foot five, 260 pounds. He's built like a day one edge for the NFL. He would be absolutely a stellar pick to steal in the early second round. 88% pass rush grade, 96 run defense. Absolute steal right here. There's a lot of really good edges, defensive tackles in this class. So we're going to fix that defensive line first before we go to the offensive trenches. But like I said, this entire draft will be off or will be the trenches on both sides. 260 pounds, six foot five, really quick, really solid pick right there. All right, so here's the trade. We just picked at 34. So we're going to trade down from 44 to 50. And this is trade value. This is adequate trade value. This is very accurate. The Bears are going to get from the Colts. Their 50th overall pick. So we're trading down six spots. They want to come up for someone. We're going to get 4119 for that. I think that's a solid trade. I think the Bears and the Colts would both be happy to do that one if the Colts have someone in mind they want to trade up for. So that's the trade we're going to do to get an extra draft pick. And then I'll trade one away and come up from 4-1-19 as well. With that, we're going to take Tyler Booker, who I really like as a guard prospect. He could be a day one starter for us. He's in a pro-style offense at Alabama, and he's good size. 6'5", 325, left guard. You're going to see in a minute we're going to take the other ta or the other guard from Alabama as well. I'm not a huge Alabama fan. I'm not trying to say Alabama is the end-all, be-all. I just like both of these guards in that offensive scheme. I think they make the center, Parker Brailsford, look even better than a lot of people. A lot of people put that all on Parker Brailsford. Both these guards are going to be good guards in the NFL. I don't like Parker Brailsford as much as some of you might. A lot of you have mentioned him in the comments. I'm not a fan of Parker Brailsford at all. When I watch his game, he's too undersized. He doesn't have the mechanics or the film that I like to see. But when I watch that, both these guards stand out for me. So Tyler Booker, 6'5", 325. Not the quickest, but not slow. But his pass blocking is way up there, and his run blocking is solid. So he's a very balanced guard. Picking him up in the mid to late second round would be really solid, especially after picking up the extra draft capital. Uh, two sacks allowed in, in college, but that's in the SEC in Alabama, and that does mean something to me. When they're playing pro-style offense and they play in, one, in the toughest conference in college football, it does mean something to me. So I like Tyler Booker. I think he'd be a great prospect to bring in. There's other prospects, probably a little bit better, a little higher. Tate Ratledge being my favorite, but I think those defensive players are more important to take that high. All right. Third round, pick 76. We're still going to focus on that defensive line. I know some of you might not like this. Voice it. Let me hear about it. But these prospects in this draft on the defensive line are too solid. And this is a Demarcus Walker type of player who's versatile. He can come in to tackle, go out to edge, and he's solid. Once again, look at this down here. Pass rush, 94% grade. Run defense, 89% grade. 54 pressures this year on 340 opportunities as we get into the off season and i break down those grades for you guys as i go do my full off season videos that is a stellar pressure per snap opportunity five stacks this year nine last year seven the year before very consistent and that run defense has been consistent the last couple years as well so i really like ashton Golette. he's a great player that could learn a lot from demarcus walker before demarcus walker's contract is over and he has high potential. He probably wouldn't be a day one starter, but he's one that could come in and compete right off the bat and has high, high upside. So I really like him taking him with our third round pick, 76th overall. Then as we get into the fourth round, a lot of teams will trade for the beginning of the fourth round. Players that drop out of the end of the second and third round day two picks. So with that, the Bears are going to do that. They're going to have, they're going to find a guy they have their eye on. They're going to trade the Jaguars. They're 4-119, their seventh rounder, and a future sixth rounder. Some of you aren't going to like this, but that's what those late round picks are for is to trade up with to get into the players that are first, second, third, early fourth rounders. So I'm going to capitalize on my draft strategy. This is how I truly believe the draft should go. Bears need to capitalize on those day one, two picks. And then early fourth round, you can get some gems, Roshan Johnson type of players. 
So the Bears are going to trade up, trade with the Jaguars for 119, 7230, and a future sixth to trade up to the beginning of the fourth round, pick 104 overall. With that, let's move this. The Bears are going to take a backup tackle. I This might shock some people. Truly believe it's a good move. Darnell Wright's doing fine. He's good. And this is the fourth round. You're going to pick prospects that you can develop and iron sharpening iron. You guys hear that term all the time. But Ajani Cornelius is really a solid prospect that could grow. In Rhode Island, he was really top of the game. And then he transferred to Oregon, playing big league ball now. And he's kept it up. It's not like he had a big dip. These are all solid grades in here, all green grades, solid pass blocking and run blocking tackle, right tackle. He would go behind Darnell Wright, learn behind him, and really just provide some depth. Darnell Wright was, was picked two years ago. He's probably our, our right tackle for the next 10 years, but you need depth, and that's what we've been lacking. And this would be a solid depth piece to learn behind Darnell Wright and to be able to have someone for the future. So what they have here for him is he's a 104. Like I said, I'm going off these gradings. Solid day to pick those, what they projected him for. All right, with our fifth round pick, I'm going to go ahead and take that other Alabama guard that I mentioned. And I think both of these guys really make Parker Brailsford look really good. He's the right guard, pick 149. That's exactly where he's projected right now. So it's kind of falling into place. 310 pounds, 6 foot 5. Very power blocking skill set, if you see right there. So gap and inside zone schemes next level. He creates 70% pass blocking grade, 79%, and these grades all look really good. So not going to start. He could start. So we have Matt Pryor still. We're going to re-sign him, as I said. But if he comes in and compete, beats Matt Pryor out, I'm all in favor for it. That's what we're doing in this draft is we're building the trenches. That's what you guys wanted to see. So we're taking three defensive players, two offensive players, and now here's our third offensive player in the trenches. So three defensive, three offensive. And I think this player is a little bit underrated. He didn't start every year. In fact, he's only started the last two years, but he's been really started, solid. He's only allowed three sacks in the last two years total. Six foot five, 308 for Florida. But Jake Slaughter, he's very intelligent from every report you see. He can, he can call out, and your center needs to kind of be your captain there with the quarterback. So we can call out schemes that he sees. He could be very vocal with Caleb and help him out. Like I said, we're retaining Coleman Shelton, but for him to learn behind Coleman Shelton as well, uh, we also have Ricky Stromberg that we signed and brought in. Hopefully his knee, knee heals. There's a couple center options. I like this. You have Coleman Shelton who's familiar with Caleb Williams, and then you bring Jake Slaughter in, and you have Ricky Stromberg to be able to, to learn both of those guys compete. I like the prospect of that to be able to have these guys all as a solid, deep center room. Maybe Ricky Stromberg doesn't pan out, but Jake Slaughter to me is a great prospect. All right, and then this one might shock some people, but this is the type of prospect I want to go for in the seventh round. So Luke Lackey was a very high prospect to start this year. In fact, if you look, most places have him at 127 still because they haven't adjusted. They have him at 245. We're taking him at 242 because he's had a poor year. And Iowa knows how to produce those tight ends. But I want to take a guy who is very high prospect, 6'6", 247, decent speed, good year last year, very high prospect, low drop percentage, good contested catch percentage, low yards, but his big knock on him is his blocking. So he's falling down draft boards. I still like Luke Lackey. And if we can pick him up in the seventh round, that's a steal. Do I want us to pick him up in the fourth or fifth round? Not the way he's played this last year. He's had a rough last year. He hasn't produced in Iowa. He hasn't produced to look like he's going to be an NFL tight end. But this is what you're taking with your seventh round pick as a prospect. Someone that could potentially develop. Most tight ends take two, three, four years in the NFL to develop. And if you draft him now to replace Mercedes Lewis, you've still got Cole Komet. You've still got Gerald Everett. We have depth there. This is a great prospect, in my opinion, of who you take in the seventh round. All right, with that, we're going to take a couple of undrafted free agents, too. I showed this one before. This is R.J. Harvey. He's one of the leading rushers in college football this year so far. Really good uh, running back, big body, two, 208 pounds, nine, five foot nine. A uh, little bit of knock on his blocking, which is why he's an undrafted free agent. But we're going to take him. And then Jacob DeJesus is one of the best punt returners in, in the entire uh NCAA, one of the very best out there. You can see his punt return grades this year, 83. 
Um, his receiving grades are also solid. Uh, he's a second team All American, and we're replacing DeAndre Carter with Jacob DeJesus, who's also a solid backup wide receiver. So I like all these moves. All right, let's move into here's how the last, the first three drafts of this. <laughs> Stupid that we've done three mock drafts already, but we're going to keep doing it as long as the Bears keep losing. Once we're mathematically eliminated, one each week every time we lose. I'm not going to do one if we win this next week or when we win the next time. I won't be doing one. Put two mock drafts there. It's three. Sorry about that, guys. Boom. Let's cover that up. So here's the first one over on the left. Man. Here's the first one over on the left. Did a lot of trades in that one. Did a lot of trades here. Going to do less trades. That was just kind of for fun. A lot of my UNLV in there, too. Here's the last one we did with the simulator, and here's the most recent one. And if we're going trenches, this is actually my favorite one so far. I really like this trenches draft. This would be fun to see the Bears pull this off, bring a ton of competition. But how does it look as we go through the team now? Here's where we stand, and the contracts on this look great. I mean, we've got depth for years to come. Like I said, Matt Pryor could still start. He's doing really well at guard. Jaden Roberts can learn behind him. Tyler Booker would start day one for sure. Braxton Jones still starting. Competition with Kieran Amagaji. This is what you want to see. You want to see depth. You want to see competition. You want to see these guys battling it out. Iron, iron sharpening iron. Like I said, a center. Coleman Shelton, Jake Slaughter, and Ricky Stromberg. That's fun to see for me. Coleman Shelton, the 10th rated center this year. Bears fans are crapping on him, but he's actually doing a really good job. Darnell Wright, Johnny Cornelius battling it out. That'd be fun. So this is what I want to see. I want to see depth. I want to see depth with the offensive line. That would look really good. Here's the running back room, Caleb and quarterbacks. Caleb and Tyson, it's not going to change. DeAndre Swift, Roshan Johnson, Ian Wheeler coming back from injury, and R.J. Harvey. I think that would be a lot of fun to watch these guys. Wide receivers, tight ends, nothing really changes except Gerald Everett, to me, falls down the depth charts. Luke Lackey would be able to get an opportunity. Good hands, good receiving tight end. D.J. Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, Tyler Scott, Colin Johnson, who would probably get relegated back down to the practice squad, and Jacob DeJesus as punt returner. That's really fun. I mean, you're, you're staying status quo there, but I like it. All right, here's the defensive line, the last I want to focus on, really. You got Montez Sweat with Jack Sawyer on the other side. That is a tandem duo that would be solid. Jervon Dexter, Walter Nolan, solid. And then you got Ashton Gillette, Demarcus Walker, Andrew Billings, all backing them up and rotating in. Austin Booker hopefully puts 15 more pounds on, continues to work on his handwork. The Bears love Dominic Robinson. I'm done with him, but maybe they hang on to him. Zach Pickens is developing. We'll see if he – we're not going to cut him off his rookie contract, but he would be the depth piece there. Not had a good, Did not have a good game against the Vikings, so uh, I'm knocking on him there, but he's got to improve, and he's not doing it so far. That was probably the worst second-round pick so far. Third-round pick. That was a third-round pick. Probably the worst pick by polls so far. Nothing changes here with the linebackers. Nickelbacks, like I said, we're not doing the cut game. We're not doing the salary cap game. Nothing changes there. Nothing really changes on our cornerbacks and safeties. So that's how it looks. Biggest changes right there, the defensive line and the offensive line. This is the trenches draft. So I really like this draft. I like it a lot. Let me know what you guys think, though. How you guys like this draft? What would you change about it? Do you like the trenches draft? Obviously, this doesn't account for free agency. Like I said, we're going through this one a little bit quicker, uh, just focusing on the trenches. Let me know what you guys think. One each time the Bears lose. Tell the offseason, then we'll do more. We'll do them more frequently. But this is the one for this week. We have a quick game coming up Thursday. So I'm going to try to pound a lot of stuff in here before Thursday to you guys. Appreciate all you tuning in. If you haven't hit the like button, please do so. If you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. Go Bears. Bear down. Da Bears.